I'm confident that inside this orange case is one of the coolest watches you're going to see in 2023. But to be honest, this one came out of left field a little bit because it's been sent to me by Rudland and they're known primarily for making bronze military watches, field watches, pilot watches and bronze dive watches, not all stainless steel retro inspired chronographs. So when they reached out to me to invite me to review it and they sent me a picture of it, I was really surprised to see what they wanted to send me. But I thought it looked epic, strong tingles immediately. So of course I said, yes, please. And I can't wait to head over to the light box and show you what they've sent me. Now, be honest, is this one of the coolest watches you've seen in 2023 thus far? I think it looks awesome. It's not what I was expecting from Rudland or Roland. I'm still not entirely sure how to pronounce their name. But anyway, um, yeah, I was not expecting this when they contacted me and said, would you like to review our latest watch? But I think it looks awesome. It is a homage watch of a watch that was made in the 70s and 80s with ties to the space program. So yeah, underneath there is a little space dude on the case back. I'm not going to let you know which watch is um, being homaged by this watch. And there's a very good reason for that. And if you're curious, head down to the video description. I've put a full explanation in there, but no doubt Junior will let you know in the comments section. But yeah, um, I'll give you all the specifications towards the end of the video. Um, but first, I just want to, um, yeah, freestyle, wax lyrical about this awesome watch. It is a quartz chronograph. And when it arrived, actually, um, the quartz second hand wasn't um, aligned at the 12 o'clock. Really easy um, to correct. You just pull the crown out to um, the second position and, um, yeah, just press this button until you um, basically get the second hand. Um, where you want it to be um, when you're not using the chronograph. And of course, that is, um, well, up around there. And then, yeah, push it in. Start. Single ticks per second. So it's not a snap back chronograph. A stop and, yep, yeah, reset. I will open up the case back and show you the movement in a moment. But first, um, yeah, let's have a closer look at this dial. Let's zoom in. A bit more, I think. And there it is. Now, um, there's a few versions of this watch available. You can have it sterile. You can have it signed. You've also got some options when it comes to the color of the dial, blue or black. And also um, the seconds hand um, for the chronograph. Um, there's a sort of aeroplane set of wings on this one, um, which actually I quite like. Um, it sort of draws your attention to um, that hand, doesn't it? Um, but there are some other options available. So yeah, if you are interested in this watch, um, make sure you are ordering um, the watch that you want. I'll put some links in the video description. There will be affiliate links, of course. And um, yeah, if you decide to head over to AliExpress via those links, um, thank you so much because um, yeah, if you buy something, this channel will earn a little bit of commission. How cool is it? It just looks so cool. Now the tachymeter, I think is um, attached to the underside of the crystal. Um, I think it's sapphire. I will test it in a moment. But yeah, you can see that sort of black ring around the outside of the crystal. Um, sits really, really high um, inside the watch. So yeah, I suspect that is printed to the underside of the crystal. Um, it's just such a cool shape. I can't get over how cool this thing is. Um, what subdials do we have then? Running seconds at the six. What's the alignment like on the hand? That looks pretty good, actually. And then we've got minutes for the chrono at the 12. And um, what's that at the nine? Hours for the chronograph. Wow. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to be timing some stuff for a long time. I guess it's a sort of pilot-inspired chronograph. Although, um, like I said, um, the original watch had links to the space program. There is some loom. I'll do a loom test towards the end of the video as well. Um, day date complication at the three. They've packed quite a lot in. You've got five minute markers or numerals on the inside of those hour markers. Obviously the tachymeter around the outside. Just a really cool vintage sort of retro dial and case shape. Love it. Absolutely love it. And the, well, the bracelet as well. Um, let me just zoom out a little bit. 
There we go. I've removed all the thumbprints. Um, an integrated bracelet, which suits the style and the look of the watch, obviously. Um, it's going to be a bit tricky to find um, alternative straps or bracelets, um, but it just looks really, really cool. I think it might be a touch thick, mind. Um, they look quite thick, those links, don't they? And um, yeah, I have been wearing it a little bit. It feels comfortable enough. Um, a little bit of a hair puller, I must admit. Um, but the brushing's done very, very nicely. Obviously, um, some taper um, down to these links here. I'll give you some measurements um, shortly. And yeah, the clasp is a bit of a funny one. It's milled. It feels nice enough. Um, it's fairly small and discreet. Um, nice pushers either side. No safety latch. Um, yeah, well finished. Fully brushed. Um, there is some polishing on the case, which I'll show you in a moment. But the bracelet and the clasp. Fully brushed, um, screw links, solid links, solid end links, all the good stuff. Um, but yeah, this clasp has this, well, um, let me show you, um, a diver's extension, which on this watch I think is a bit of a waste and it's not really a practical one because it's giving you, oh, I don't know, 25 millimeters of extension and it's quite ugly extension as well. So it's not like if you have a massive wrist, you're going to utilize this all day every day um, just seems like a bit of a waste really um, although it doesn't add too much thickness if I can I'll close it properly hang on you'll have to bear with me I've got a fractured finger and thumb at the moment so um, yeah with things like this I'm struggling oh there we go let me try that again I figured out what I was doing wrong um, yeah when you're ugh, messing around with this um, extension you have to put this section up first and then this section and then it will close nicely look um, but yeah I mean it seems to work nice enough I just don't think it's needed on this watch and there's the case back no details no specifications um, yeah no print at all just a space dude waving at you screw down case back pull push crown and there's a couple of listings on AliExpress one of them has this watch as having 30 meters of water resistance the other one 50 meters I have messaged them to get clarification, unfortunately, there's nothing on the dial to help us out. Now, I've added my macro lens so we can zoom in and have a look at the case finishing. And actually, it looks all right, doesn't it? I'm not seeing any obvious streaks or signs of rushed polishing on the bezel, which is good. And there is a high polished chamfered edge running down the length of the case a little bit of streaking there look where the light is sort of bouncing off that chamfered edge you can see those lines um but yeah the finishing looks um yeah pretty good for um the price point and um, there's a scratch there on the bezel already and that was probably me but you never know so small you're not going to see it with the naked eye yeah i'm impressed with the bezel finishing for sure that chamfered edge um perhaps not um, the best but yeah um, under macro obviously you're going to see all of the flaws and faults and uh, let's move on to the brushing brushing does seem yeah very nice love the design of this bracelet um, yeah it's just really cool really funky really retro I do like the fact that it um, ties in with the uh, case nicely but it is going to limit your options um, if you don't like this bracelet and like I've already said um, it is quite thick actually um, the bracelet would not have been this thick um, in the 70s and 80s for sure. I sometimes think manufacturers make the links really, really thick because it sort of gives the impression of quality. And it does to some degree, but on a watch like this, I just don't think they need to be quite that thick. And there are the screw heads. They look nicely done, don't they? Moving down to the clasp, you've got Rudland there. That seems also to be nicely done. And the pushers on the clasp and now let's check out the dial um yeah looks nice enough it is a fairly dark dial so if it was littered with debris dna and dust and all that stuff you'd see it quite clearly and um, sometimes when i'm now doing these live macro shots you'll see um little hairs or something that might appear on top of the crystal there's one at the top right hand corner there just by the 300 look well, it was a hair look. Well, I managed to get rid of it just with a bit of um, putty. So yeah, that was a hair on top of the crystal. But yeah, dial looks nicely done. Um, this is obviously the black dial version. Um, some burst effect and some radial brushing or radial and detail on the sub dials. Um, hands look clean enough. I'm not seeing any 
marks or dust or debris or any faults in the print. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I've spied another hair. Outside or in? Outside or in? Oh, outside again. Yep, yeah, it's gone. And here it is then on my roughly average sized wrist, good weight distribution all the way around because you've got, well, a milled clasp and solid links, solid end links. Um, yeah, can you see what I mean by um, the bracelet just looking a little bit thick and chunky? Can you see how it sort of sits, not off my wrist, but um, it just looks quite thick, yeah. Um, now, one thing to note, um, no micro adjust. So they've given you a massive diver's extension uh, but no ability to adjust the length of this bracelet um, less than a full link, basically. So um, it's a touch too loose for me. And if I was to take another link out, it would be yeah definitely too tight. So I've managed to get an OK fit. It's worth bearing that in mind if you are considering this watch. But oh, the way it looks, it's just killer, isn't it? Love it. And as promised, there is the movement inside this watch. It is a Miyota um, OS00, um, so a no jeweled quartz chronograph movement. Um, yeah, it's all right. Right, it's time to test out the loom. I'm going to let it degrade for five minutes and um, yeah, we'll find out whether or not it's any good. Right, the five minutes is up and the camera is still able to pick up the loom on the hands. So it's not the worst loom I've ever seen, um, but it's far from the best. Now this watch is currently available at the official store on AliExpress for 185 US dollars. And I think despite the weaknesses that I've mentioned, that represents pretty good value for money. Okay, the movements are fairly uninspiring quartz chronograph movements. There's no ability or you will have no ability to adjust the length of the bracelet to a more macro level, which I think might put a few people off. If you're quite particular about how your watches fit, um, then yeah, maybe avoid. But um, I've managed to get an okay fit. There's a fairly pointless diver's extension in the class, but the loom isn't fantastic and... Yeah, it's an integrated bracelet, which means your alternative strap or bracelet options are going to be limited. But there's lots to like about this watch, not just the way it looks. It's actually been very nicely made, been beautifully finished. It feels solid, well built. Um, yeah, I mean, it is a cracking looking watch, isn't it? I absolutely love the way this thing looks. Um, the way it looks is worth $185 as far as I'm concerned. Um, but yeah, let me know, guys, in the comments section what you think of this watch. Um, your comments are fun for me to read and useful for everybody else considering buying this watch. Right, guys, as always, massive thank you from me to you for tuning in. I do appreciate it.